Hello, 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 and welcome to Courageously Kind, a show in which we talk about the complexities of kindness. We're your hosts, Ravi and Liz, and we want to change the world through meaningful conversation. We hope that our conversations help spark conversations of your own to create change in ourselves, our communities, and our world. Without further ado, let's get started. So, we're back. <laughs> We were gone for a couple weeks because we got crazy busy with graduation and graduation parties, but we're finally back to podcasting. It's really exciting. Um, Thanks for being patient with us. (laughs) We wanted to talk really quickly about Disability Pride Month. July is Disability Pride Month, and it's not as well known as... Pride Month that we had last month for the LGBTQIA plus community. Mm-hmm. So we're hoping that raise a little bit more awareness for Disability Pride Month all throughout the month of July. So yeah. happy Disability Pride Month. Today we're going to be talking specifically about Liz's condition, Golden Heart Syndrome. We've talked about it a lot before, but we wanted to have a specific video that you could go to if you had any questions. I'm gonna be interviewing Liz, sort of, (laughs) asking her some of her most frequently asked questions and hopefully answering some of your questions, clearing up some misconceptions about what Golden Heart Syndrome is and getting to know Liz a little bit better. Yeah. Let's jump right into it. Do you want to explain just a little bit about what Golden Heart Syndrome is? Sure. Just the brief basic rundown. Basic rundown, it is a rare congenital condition, and it's a syndrome, so it's not a disease. We always call it a condition, um, but a syndrome is a collection of signs and symptoms. So it is kind of a collection of anomalies, abnormalities, um, that is all-encompassing, labeled as Golden Heart. Syndrome. So it's not a disease. It's not something that's contagious. It's not something that Liz caught at right. any point in time. Um, it's characterized as a congenital condition. As a congenital birth defect. So you're born with it. It happened before you were born. Um, in my case, my face didn't develop, grow and develop properly before I was born. So it's not something that you can like develop over your lifetime, you're either born with it or you're not. Yeah, and it's not curable because it's not really a disease. We always tell people, um, think about, you know, it's just a structural issue. It's not um, a disease or anything like that. And syndromes don't typically have cures. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. probably methods of like prevention Mm -hmm. and things like that. And there's treatment treatments but not like a cure Mm -hmm. because it's not a disease it's not something like cystic fibrosis or you know cancer even that has a a cure or a method of stopping it Mm -hmm. because it's kind of like once you've developed you have it right yeah Yeah. it's not really something like you get rid of Mm -hmm. per se so in my case I have a cleft lip and a cleft palate meaning that my lip and my palate didn't grow and close. So when I was born, my lip was open. My palate was like open. I didn't realize that your lip and your palate are some of the last things to come together yeah. and form on your face. Because there are a lot of people that are born with cleft lips and palates that don't have Golden Heart Syndrome mm-hmm. um, and are just born with a cleft lip or a cleft palate, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. So that happened. Um, my eye didn't grow and develop properly. I'm missing my mandible. I don't have a jawbone over here. Um, I'm missing an ear. We can get into the ear story a little bit later, but if you can try and imagine my right ear, I had to do a little elephant. I do too. I never remember which uh, side is which. <laughs> my right ear was kind of like all in like a little bow, like a little knot. We call it a knot ear because it looks like a knot, but it also was not. And ear. Ha ha. real um, honey thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that was removed. Question. Yeah. Do you have an eardrum on that side? Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. It is covered by, I think, 
bone or cartilage or something. So all of like the inner ear I have, but any, like obviously there's no exterior. It's kind of like imagine like a door, like covered up, like closed in. Okay, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So like no ear canal, none of that stuff, but all the inner stuff. Like, so can you hear head. a little bit yeah. on that side? A little bit, if you were to put headphones on that side, um, like in any hearing test where you put headphones on, um, I can hear a little bit of frequency. I can get to it, but not much. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So I think we covered everything on your beautiful face. <laughs> um, <laughs> Golden Heart Syndrome, um, no one really knows what causes it specifically. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an abnormality on one of the chromosomes. Um, in development. It was first documented and called Golden Heart Syndrome in 1952 by a doctor named Maurice Golden Heart. Shout out Maurice, um, <laughs> who was an ophthalmologist, so an eye doctor, and also just a general practitioner of medicine. Yeah. It affects one in every 3,000 to 5,000 births. So we were just talking about this. It's not it's enough to be considered rare, mm -hmm. but it's not extremely uncommon. Mm -hmm. It's not really like astronomically mm -hmm. uncommon. And over the past couple of years, through the internet and social media, we've met so many people with Golden yeah. Heart Syndrome. I think growing up, mm -hmm. not seeing anybody else, we were lucky we knew another family that okay. actually were twin sisters and one of them had Golden Heart and one of them didn't. So we were really lucky to know so that. So lucky. And they, only, they, were, they lived like an hour away from us. Yeah, which was crazy. Crazy. So we were really lucky to know them. But through the internet, we've gotten to know so many more people with Golden Heart Syndrome, which is really, really cool. So, to get into some more specifics, sure. does Golden Har affect your day-to-day -day life in any way? Um, a little bit. I The quick answer is like no, because it's what I've always known. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think it affects my life at all. Mm -hmm. um, I am like the slowest eater alive. When you think about it, I'm missing like half my jawbone. Mm -hmm. So, it makes sense that um, eating is very slow. Um, I have about 2100 vision in this eye. So um, technically legally blind? Don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But like if I close my eyes, I can't read any, mm -hmm. can't read anything. Mm -hmm. Um, like I can't see that time up there. Mm -hmm. No clue. But I have 2020 in my other eye. So she does all the hard work. She makes up for everything. There you go. And other than that, it really doesn't affect you know, my day to day routine. Yeah. yeah. Liz did wear glasses as a kid. I think they thought that that would help strengthen the other mm -hmm. eye, help her read, and things like that. But as she got older, they realized that there really wasn't a whole lot of of difference whether she had mm -hmm. glasses on or whether she didn't have glasses on. So. And they were they weren't helping, and so I thought, you know, why bother? Yeah. They're not helping anything. Yeah. Yeah. And the other eye is twenty twenty, so. That's good. Did you know you can legally drive a car if you have like decent vision in one eye but are legally blind in the other eye? You can still drive a car. Huh. Very interesting. So interesting. I'm trying to think of some more commonly asked questions. Does your condition cause you any pain? Yeah, no pain. I'm, I'm pretty happy and healthy. Good. Which I, I, I tell that to people and sometimes they're like surprised. They're like, oh, like, really? Oh, really? You're, oh, are you sure you're not in any pain? Are you sure? Okay. Um, Nothing hurts. Let's talk a little bit about surgeries if you're comfortable. Let's go for it. A lot of people ask after first hearing about Golden Heart Syndrome, can you have surgery to fix it? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the answer is um, we're working on it. <laughs> We've been working on it. Yeah, but. so I've had around 30 surgeries. I say around because sometimes we do what's called like piggyback surgeries. So you'll do like two different procedures in one time and setting. Um, so some people count that as two, some people don't count that kind of as one. So I say around 30, so I don't really know. Um, it sounds good around It 30. sounds good, yeah. So the first like 
big one that I remember was called Jaw Distraction, where they, they can, gonna get this right. It's intense. They break the jaw, refed it, and then they put things in. They put like screws and things in so that the jaw will come forward. And every day you would have to like tighten it so that it would move forward. So I had that when I was four. <laughs> Talk about trauma. Oh That's intense. Wild. That's intense. Um, and then the next really big one I remember they took the knot ear off and they took, apparently, I was just reading about what they did. Apparently I had an extra rib. Which is like, what? Which is weird or extra rib cartilage. Mm -hmm. So they took that out, made an ear out of it and stuck it on my head. <laughs> it was, I don't want to say it was like an experimental procedure. No, but it wasn't, I mean, it obviously wasn't a normal procedure. Yeah. Um, and we kind of held our breath about it yeah. for a while. Now the ear didn't, it couldn't hear, it wasn't like functioning. It was yeah. more for um, symmetrical purposes. Mm -hmm. And also at the time she was wearing glasses. Right. So she needed something to hold. Hold it you up. Think about how you wear glasses over your ears. You need something to hold a glass, a glasses, a glasses, okay. <laughs> a pair of glasses yeah. on your head. Yeah. So I had the rib ear for a while, for a good 10 years. I and I had a couple different surgeries with that because the first one they made it and they stuck it like flush to my head. So as you can imagine, it was like stuck down all the way. Mm -hmm. And then I think we had two more to bring it out. So, so it looks it like would, it because yeah. your ears don't sit flat to your head. Right. So I think we had two of those mm -hmm. to move it out. Did you have it pierced? I did have it pierced for a while. It would get infected like all the time. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, but then we got rid of it, so it's in that. There you go. Um, when I was 15, they made the ear big, um, a little too big, in hopes that I would grow into it, because they made it when I was seven. So the... the and your ears are one of the last things that continue to grow, yeah. which is really interesting. Yeah. So they made it big intentionally, thinking I would grow into it, but I never grew into it. And it wasn't completely symmetrical because if, in order for it to be symmetrical, they had to go into the hairline more. And I didn't want to interrupt this beautiful hairline. So <laughs> they made it and it sat lower than a normal ear should. So when I was 15, I had plans to get a nose job. We'll go into the nose in a minute. Um, but they said, you know, if you really don't like it, if it doesn't feel right, if you're uncomfortable with it, we can just take it off. And we can get you a prosthetic, and we can just... Oh, we should have brought the prosthetic. Oh, damn it. Forgot it. We'll have a separate meet we'll the prosthetic it it. interview. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, 15, they took it off. It's a big, beautiful star now. And now it's just all flat right here. The skin is like skin from like my stomach. It feels kind of really, can I touch it? It feels kind of really cool. I don't know. Have you ever had like a scar and you feel what a scar feels like? It feels like that, yeah. like smooth. Yeah. I don't really have a lot of feeling over here either. Hmm. So they took that off and... How old are you when you got your prosthetic? 16? 16, 15? Yeah, 15 or 15. I've had that ever since. I don't really wear it a lot. I kind of, like, after I got my prosthetic, I'm so grateful for it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. But I kind of had that realization of, like, it's never going to be a real ear. Mm -hmm. And that feeling of, like, oh, I want, like, a real ear. Mm -hmm. um, it looks really real. It looks really real. And she sat with an artist for, like, six <gasps> hours, and they, like, matched her skin tone perfectly. It was such a cool day to sit with them and like watch her do it. And they ha she had like basic colors. Mm -hmm. It was like red, yellow, blue, a little peach color, green, brown. And, that and was then to it. watch them color match it. And did they take a mold of this ear they did and then, then flipped it? Yeah, and then they flipped it. Uh, so I think really that cool. prosthetic is also pierced. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she can pierce it more if she wants. She wants to. 
I don't know, I feel weird about poking it and putting holes in it. Yeah. But I don't, but it's just it's a little bit labor intensive to put the prosthetic on. Yeah. I'm so grateful I have it. Mm. I love it. And I wear it often. It's just a lot. Yeah. If I want it, I have the option. If I want it, I have it. That's cool. Yeah. So then going back to surgeries. Mm -hmm. Um Nose job? No sound. So when I was born, my nose was kind of like collapsed. Um, if you can kind of see the scar goes all the way up to the nose, so the lips were open, but the nose was also open. And you know, you don't realize this whole, okay, here's the, mm -hmm. get my fingers out of your nose. <laughs> Everything was open to like here. Up so to the, the nose. Right, so the nose was open as well. Um, I think I have a baby picture from my Instagram where you can see that. But, um, follow my Instagram. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the nose was open, so when I was really little, they did like an emergency nose job. Just like, kind, kind of, of like quick stick fix, it. Stick it back together. Does it function? Yeah. Good. Okay, get a little air in and out. Good. So that was a temporary, like, quick fix situation. And then when I was like 15, but when I was younger than that, mm. my doctor said, literally come in with any picture of a nose and it will make you the nose that you want because we had to do kind of which is so cool it's so weird it's like a little kid it's like a catalog pick up a nose right you don't realize like the different nose shapes yes until you like are right. looking at noses yeah. <laughs> sidetrack about noses <laughs> so i came into him i said you know i just want it to look a certain way and then he made it and i had a nose you've got a good nose Thank you. I'm pretty proud. Do you have a deviated septum as well? Oh yeah, that. really deviated. And when they were all done, they came in. They're like, "How did you breathe with that?" So messed up. You're like, "Well, I made it 15 years, so I was breathing yeah, somehow." Yeah. And now my nose is really like firm. Yeah, you know how it's like not... the end of the nose is like really cartilagey. Liz's is not. I guess it's cartilagey like on the sides, but yeah. it is like firm. Yeah. Can the thumbnail just be us playing with noses? Can it? Cute. No, we have to make it look nice. Cute. Okay. I think we covered all our bases here. We did. Liz has braces. We do. We want to talk about orthodontia a little bit. It's really boring. You don't have to go into that. I have braces for like five years, and I'm going to have them until the end of time. Oh, stop. <laughs> no, they're waiting until I get them in the mandibular yeah, you want replacement. To talk about that? Yeah. So we eventually are getting a jawbone. Woo! Jawbone. Sounds like we're like getting a new car or something. We're getting a jawbone. Woo! Probably costs more than um, a car. <laughs> um, and so what they'll probably do is do like metal or plastic. Like they call it a replacement. It's not a replacement. It, it was never there. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I've lost all my thoughts, but they'll put that in there, and then hopefully once that's all healed, the braces come off. Cool. And the whole face will look different. Yeah, we love it. So crazy. Do you think that'll be one of the last big procedures? Yeah, that's it. I'm done after that. I think. There you go. Yeah. I'm ready to be done. Um, Liz has a really small airway. So surgeries are always interesting because if you've never had a surgery before, what they do to put you to sleep is they have a tube that goes in your mouth down your throat and that helps you to breathe while you're asleep. Yeah. Um, keeps it stable. Yeah, because like when, when they give you all the drugs and stuff, like everything relaxes a lot. Which your airway can literally relax. Right. Relax. And your lungs can like not work well. Yeah. I don't know. So because Liz's airway is a little bit small, surgeries are a little bit nerve-wracking because um, you need a, a tube in there to make sure that you mm -hmm. aren't breathing. Yeah. Um, and we've had a few complications with that. But hopefully this mandibular replacement yeah. will um, help open up that airway a little bit, help yeah. open the back of the mouth a bit. Yeah, they'll bring the whole jaw like up. Like forward, forward. Uh, so if you can imagine it, like here's the airway and like here's the jaw. Right now, it's kind of 
cut in there. Kind of close in there. Yeah, kind of close in there. But hopefully with the replacement, it'll bring the top out. Give the airway some more room. Yeah. So then, you know, knock on wood, but you ever need another operation, intubation won't be yeah. as big of a cause of concern. Yeah. I tell you the last time I felt the extubation. Yeah, Liz had to be really weird. The last surgery Liz had was kind of intense. Okay. But here's the thing. It was the first one she was there for. First one I ever went to the hospital. And it with, was because I was old enough to go. It was the easiest procedure literally of my entire life. Yeah. I went to the orthodontist that summer and they were like, Your you have like scar tissue inside on your bottom lip. We think your mouth is too small. And you're like, yeah, I could have told you that, but... Right. <laughs> um, but they said, you know, we really would like, you know, to go in there and kind of make some more room to just cut some of the Remove tissue. Remove some of the scar tissue. Yeah. Open it up a little bit. Just so it's not rubbing all the time. You're not wearing down that muscle. So I thought, okay, easiest procedure of my life. Quick, easy. Quick, easy. Home the next day. Or so home. I was like, great, perfect first procedure for me to perfect. go to. Hospitals make me very nervous. Mm -hmm. You did good. Thank you. I did um, not do good. <laughs> they had some problems getting the breathing tube in to Liz's throat. Mm -hmm. um, and Liz, is, Liz has had the same surgeon her whole life, mm -hmm. which is great. We love him. He's yeah. part of the family at this point. <laughs> but he's very cut and dry. Mm -hmm. And he's very, he always prepares us for the worst case scenario. Which I like that. Which I like that too, yeah. and I used to really hate that, but I really enjoy that because mm -hmm. he came out and he was telling us all of these things of like, she's not going home tonight, which we were like, what do you mean she's not going home tonight? Um, she might be have to be on a ventilator. We were like, what? And we freaked out. Um, and the surgery was like, a, like an hour long surgery turned into like, I don't even know how, I think it was about four hours. I have no idea. Felt like eternity. Yeah. Um, but then he came out at the end and he was like, yeah, breathing tubes out and she's fine. You can go see her. We were like, what? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me? It was wild. Um, but he's amazing. Yeah. And he prepped us for the worst. And then um, it didn't happen. And then it didn't happen and we were so yeah. relieved. And he took good care of Yeah, Liz has got a million stories like this. We could do yeah. a whole episode on funny surgery sure. stories. We hospital should. stories. We should. <laughs> we should. That was funny. Okay. I think we covered all our bases here. Yeah. Is there anything you want to leave our listeners with? Any any misconceptions about Golden Heart you want to clear up? Mm. Final um, words. You know, I always say to treat everybody the way you want to be treated. Um, with kindness and respect. Um, and talk to them like they're a human. You know, they're no different than you. I'm no different than you. I'm no different than her, you know. Just, you know, again, it comes back to kindness. And a little necklace on it says, be kind. Mm -hmm. And you should be. That's it. <laughs> if you have any additional questions about Liz and about Golden Heart Syndrome, feel free to send them our way. We are total open books. Liz loves talking about herself, if we're being honest here. <laughs> um, you can send them to our Instagram. You can always DM us on Instagram at Courageously Kind Podcast. You can email us your questions at courageouslykindpodcast at gmail.com. Um, if you follow us on TikTok, you can leave a Q&A in our a question in our Q&A yeah. box. There we go. Um, so and yeah. this is going to be on YouTube. So you can just leave them in the comments, too. Sure. You have a question. Whatever you'd like. Thanks for joining us. We hope you learned something. Yeah. And um, be nice to people. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.